Yo, thanks for checking out another episode of Kinesis PT and Performance. Today we are going to be talking about ankle and foot biomechanics and specifically how that relates to injury. Now the most important thing we need to understand is how your foot moves during a gait cycle or what we call normal biomechanics or arthrokinematics of the foot. So there's different parts of gait. Uh, the first part we're going to talk about is the initial contact. Initial contact is when our heel hits the ground. So when a normal person is walking, I say normal because that's what we assume is normal, uh, your heel hits the ground out in front of your center of gravity. As your heel, what we call your calcaneus, hits the floor, it starts to move into eversion, meaning it starts to move out to the side. So as your calcaneus everts, it's moving underneath a bone called your talus. Those two joints together make up your subtalar joint, and it moves the subtalar's joint uh, axis of motion into a parallel position to another joint called your transverse tarsal joint. So the transverse tarsal joint is made up of your talonavicular joint and your calcaneocuboid joint. Don't worry, the names of those joints don't matter too much. Just understand as your calcaneus everts, the joint becomes parallel to another joint in your foot at the transverse tarsal joint and allows increased motion, meaning it unlocks the foot because these joints are now parallel to each other, essentially. The axis of motion, I should correct myself, the axis of motion is parallel to each other. So now the foot's unlocked and our foot can start to pronate as we move into mid stance. Now pronation is a good thing. A lot of times it is demonized. Pronation is a good thing because it helps our foot accept the surface below us. It helps our foot mold to whatever lumpy surface we may be, may be stepping on. Pronation is only a bad thing when we cannot move back out of it. So again, we have our heel strike. Our calcaneus is moving into eversion. The subtalar joint axis of motion becomes parallel to the transverse tarsal joint axis of motion, unlocking the foot, allowing our foot to pronate. So our midfoot is coming down towards the ground. That medial arch is coming down towards the floor as we get into mid stance. Now we've reached the maximal point of pronation. We need our foot to do just the opposite and go into what we call supination. We need our calcaneus to evert to create that rigid foot so we have a rigid lever to push off of as we start to swing through mid stance and our other leg is moving through swing phase into toe off, okay? Now part of that happens because of the shape of the foot with the metatarsal break, meaning when you hold your foot up, let's imagine this is your foot, the metatarsal break would be that line running down your toes. That helps resupinate the foot. But the other thing that helps resupinate the foot is the motion of the pelvis. So as you're swinging through and we're pushing, the motion of the pelvis is gonna help externally rotate the femur, which externally rotates the tibia, which has an action on the talus, which causes it to move into external rotation, which will invert your calcaneus, moving the subtalar joint out of parallel with the transverse tarsal joint, causing our foot to become rigid and the midfoot begins to supinate again. So we have a rigid lever to push off of. Now, if we have any breakdown in the chain of this motion, we're gonna have a breakdown of tissues as stress gets placed on things incorrectly. For example, if I'm moving through that mid stance phase and I stay in pronation, I can't resupinate my foot, the plantar fascia of my foot is going to be over lengthened and overstretched. Another thing that's gonna happen is my first MTP, so where my big toe meets my foot, is going to go into what we call abduction, meaning your big toe is gonna to move away from midline. So if you're somebody who has bunions or you know somebody that has bunions, this can be a contributing factor to that. Um, another thing you could see is a medial side of Achilles tendinopathy, again, because that calcaneus is going too far into eversion. So the medial side or the inside of that Achilles is being overstretched. Now, all this can be driven at the foot. However, we could have hip dysfunction going on proximally up above that is not driving the foot back into hip dysfunction. I've treated runners in the past for plantar fasciitis because they had hip dysfunction, meaning their hip was not doing what it was supposed to do. 
So the femur was not externally rotating. So the tibia wasn't externally rotating. So the foot could not move back into supination and they were running basically in pronation the whole time. And the plantar fascia was just getting stretched and stretched and stretched. So understand this is a whole chain of movement. If you are somebody who has dealt with ankle foot pathology and have never had your entire kinetic chain assessed for motion, whether they're looking at specifically your ankle and foot joint and how much that can move and the quality of that movement, or looking at your pelvis and your hip, do you have proper activation and rotation through that hip to allow your foot to move back into supination or allow your foot to move into pronation the way it's supposed to? These things have to be addressed understand the pain and pathology that you experience oftentimes is a symptom of an underlying movement dysfunction. The problem isn't your pathology or pain. The problem is the movement pattern causing the pain. I love to use analogies as teaching points. So if you've ever had squeaky brakes in your car, the squeaky brakes hurt your ears. Yeah, right. The problem isn't the squeaky brakes. The problem is the brakes need to be changed. So if you went in and you just oiled up the brakes to make the squeak go away, that's not going to fix your problem. You got to change the brakes. So long winded explanation to basically say our foot is affected by the way we contact the ground in terms of how it moves. Our foot motion is also affected by the way our hip moves. If either of these things is off, we can create pathology. The same can be said of my hip. So if my foot doesn't move the right way, we can transfer different stresses up to my hip, up to my lumbar spine, T-spine, what have you, knee. That's another conversation for another day. Uh, I threw a lot at you. I hope it was somewhat informational and educational to you. If you know somebody that could benefit from this information, please share this video with them. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, please reach out. I love to talk shop about this stuff. As always, thanks for watching.